Hey guys, it's Victor. Welcome to this episode 2 of the New Life Vision series. Uh, for this episode, we'll talk about ecosystems and decentralized communities and how they can be extremely important for you to understand in order to uh, succeed in this new life. So, uh, let's take a little bit of background on uh, ecosystems. So, what is an ecosystem? If you think about uh, an ecosystem in nature, it's uh, uh, different uh, participants in nature, the trees, the water, the animals, who are kind of contributing one to another, sometimes in uh, symbiotic ways, uh, sometimes indirectly, uh, and, and the whole ecosystem has uh, somehow an interconnection that makes it more efficient. So if you look at the bees, for example, they are uh, going after the, uh, the flowers, they collect the pollen, they make honey out of it, and so on. So uh, when you think about uh, collaboration between humans, and if you think about it, so we talked about uh, modernity before, and I invite you, if you didn't already, uh, to watch the, the previous video. Uh, when you look at collaboration between uh, humans uh, and in the modern time, in, industrial, in the industrial age, you have the corporate structure with the CEO, with the executives uh, receiving orders from the CEO. So the CEO is hiring them, selecting them, then they hire people who work for people, who work for people, and so on. And at the end, you have the people who uh, work and who produce the value. And you have the customers who buy this value because they are themselves part of another, another uh, company. And everyone produces for everyone, and those here receive uh, money, investment uh, from investors and bankers and so on. And basically you have different types of people who have different uh, advantages to be there. So for example, a decision can be taken very fast and boom, it spreads to everyone and you have a new product. So if you look at uh, you know, the, the beauty of uh, fashion, you know, you have uh, the, the designer who will like come up with a strong vision and then everyone will work with this vision. There is coordination, it goes fast, it's efficient. That's the good aspect of this organization. The bad aspect of it is that that person has everything on their shoulder, meaning that they have to take all the decisions, they have to be all the time um, the best they can. They cannot demultiply themselves, so they have a limited time. So they have very little space for diversity of approaches. They cannot test or everything is going very fast. They have lots of salaries to pay every month and they have to decide very quickly what to do. Another disadvantage is that the people who are here are maybe not the best, but once they are chosen, they cannot really move. And sometimes people are no longer relevant. They kind of have to stay there and other people who could have done a better job, uh, it's, it's difficult for them to, to enter. And then the same ha happens with uh, everyone in the organization. The other, uh, let's say, challenge is for the people who come here to work. They don't have so much creative freedom. They are kind of forced to do something that they don't like so much because they want the salary at the end. And they are pretty unhappy. Uh, so they are safe on one side, but they are unhappy on the other side. Or, or let's say, not as happy as they uh, could. And then you have the uh, consumers who are, or the customers who um, have a limited amount of, uh, of potential uh, better products that can come out of this organization. And another uh, disadvantage of this type of organization is that uh, those different groups, so you take the customers, they come to take value, they buy value from this company. Then you have the team, the people who work, and they want to, so those want to have the cheapest product as possible and at the best conditions. And they don't really care about if it's profitable, they don't really care about if people are happy at work, they don't really care about how the product is being made, they just care about getting the best out of the, their money. 
Here, the people here, they are producing value. They are uh, trying to get as much of the salary as possible. They are trying to uh, do the maximum profit, but they don't really care about customers. So if they can put some material that can be harmful or anything like that, they, they don't really care so much about the customer. And then you have the uh, uh, investors who are um, interested by profit. They don't really care about if the company is doing well, if the team is happy. Uh, they don't even know and the, uh, they don't care about the customers. What they care about is are we making more profit. And so this disalignment is another challenge of this type of organization. So this is a company. Now let's take uh, the other approach, which is uh, the ecosystem. So as an example, I, I will use uh, something that everybody knows. Let's use, for example, YouTube. So let's, let's say that this is a TV channel. TV channel has a CEO, the CEO uh, hires executives. Some people are producing movies for them, studios, whatever, actors and so on. And if some better actor could have uh, been playing in those movies, they are very unlikely to be identified because people who are here, who are in charge of the casting, they don't have an unlimited amount of time and they are biased. They will uh, favor their friends, their family, uh, people they sleep with, as we have seen in Hollywood recently. And there is a limited amount. It's not a limit. Yeah, of course, there is a limited amount of places, which is the first problem. But there is also a limited amount of people in charge of trying to find and discover new talents. And so uh, this model has limitations that are solved by an, an organization type ecosystem like the YouTube platform. So if you look at YouTube, you have uh, platform owners, let's say. Uh, and basically that's the another organization. And then anyone, anyone with an internet connection can come and create their own channel on their platform. So the disadvantage here is that when you create your channel, you don't have any guaranteed salary. You might uh, need months, years to make it, to start being profitable, to start having enough revenue for yourself. It might take forever and never work. Um, that's the downside. The plus side is that you are completely free, you don't have a boss, you don't have anyone telling you what to do, you can be creative. And so when it comes to talking about this, this mutation from being um, industrial time and postmodernity, which is the age of creativity, this is the organization that, that's the only type of organization that can work and this will outcompete this. And we see it happening every day. We see it happening with Uber and the taxis, we, we see it happening with uh, the hotels, Airbnb, we see it happening with social media, we see it. decentralization and ecosystems are the only way you can benefit from having an infinity of potential people creating something cool because here you don't have someone doing the casting so you don't have these gatekeepers that can like prevent the platform or the ecosystem to, uh, to identify someone new. You just create a cool YouTube channel and people will subscribe they will comment and the algorithm will manage this influx of new candidates for getting a role in the organization. But here there is no permission needed. You just come, you upload your videos from your phone and if it's good and if people like it, you have a chance to succeed. So that's the concept of the ecosystem. If you look at you know the App Store, uh, New Life has an app. We uh, we are working every day on this app. We are trying to make it uh, very interesting for the Apple users, and we are not working for Apple. Tim Cook is not our boss, but we are uh, participating in the Apple ecosystem by being an application developer. And so it's the same way if Apple had to hire tens of thousands of developers, it would cost us so much, they wouldn't be able to manage them well because you would need to have like giant offices, an entire city to welcome all those developers and some of them would be doing some very creative, cool stuff, some others wouldn't and it would be 
too much of um, a hustle for them to manage all this, uh, the size of this organization. So ecosystems are the way to go. And um, now let's look at the next level of that, which is what New Life is working on. So ecosystems can be decentralized in their, um, let's say, in their operations, but they can be centralized in their governance. So what I mean by governance is at, at some point, the boss of Apple or the boss of uh, YouTube can decide to take an application or to take a video or an entire channel and be like, boom, goodbye. We don't want to work with you anymore. So they have a capacity uh, for censorship. They have a capacity for uh, sometimes being slow to take decisions. They have a capacity for being hacked. Uh, all the, the centralized platforms have points of failure. And they have uh, also the, the, the risk of being like acquired and mismanaged by a bigger uh, corporation, which is something that happens very often. So how can we make sure that an ecosystem will remain attached to its core values and to its community and that everyone is tied by the same uh, level of interest and their interest is actually tied together or aligned together. And so this is the decentralized autonomous community. So a decentralized autonomous community or DAC is a type of organization that is running on a computing platform that runs smart contracts. Smart contracts are contracts that are written in the code. And because they are um, encrypted and using a network of computers working together, nobody actually owns it. So you have uh, an interface, a web interface, where you can see, for example, a list of people that you could vote for who are members of the community. So that's one example of, of that, but there could be any, um, any other form. So you are like, okay, I own this amount of this platform. So let's say uh, you use New Life and you have a certain amount of nodes and those nodes allow you to participate in, in decisions because you are a member of the community. So you, um, you use your nodes to vote for people you trust, for people you want to be in charge. And then it means that New Life is no longer a company, but it's a decentralized organization where everyone around not only can participate in the actual uh, features and, and value process of the platform, but you can also own and decide how the operation should be run. And because it's on a blockchain, it's immutable. So everyone involved is at the same time potentially a user, an investor, a contributor. Obviously, there is no employee because there is no contract between two people saying, uh, I will buy your time and in exchange of this amount, you will do exactly what I said during this time. Everyone here is free. Everyone can do whatever they want. They can work or have fun as much as they want. And at the end of the day, all the value that is produced by this platform will be in some way, again, there are many, many ways to achieve that. Uh, I'm not covering all of them, but value will be uh, very likely redistributed. And so we are reaching this uh, perfect scenario where not only people are creative and free creatively, not only organizations don't have anymore this uh, restriction of having gatekeepers, but on top of it, we have a guarantee that the platform will benefit the people who participate in it. Because if you think about it, the disparity between tech giants and the members of their platforms in terms of wealth is tremendous. If you look at, you know, those trillions of dollars of valuation that are produced, of course, by great softwares, but by ecosystems of humans. When you look at this, it's pretty obvious that this is not sustainable. You cannot have organizations that keep growing and absorbing new companies and becoming uh, the, the, the giants that run everything. 
and have the same on a, uh, the political level, having like centralization, centralization, centralization. I think that at some point there would be a threshold where people will say that's enough. We want to regain some kind of sovereignty and some kind of uh, capacity to uh, have a voice and, and be able to participate in the platforms we are contributing. And so I wouldn't see it as like a revolution in the sense that people would go everywhere and throw rocks at uh, police cars and stuff like that. I, I see more a very silent revolution where people would simply stop going to work because they would have so much fun and they would make so much revenue through those decentralized creative communities. And they would own some fraction of it. And with the rise of the machine coming to replace us and reducing the price for everything, I see a world where decentralized communities would become something at the intersection between a nightclub and uh, 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 let's say a, a hobby uh, club, people who meet because they have a passion in common and the company and somehow a local community and somehow uh, a network of trust. And so I see um, uh, a world or an economy or uh, uh, an infrastructure that would be made of an infinity of DAX, some of them would be very small, some of them would be very big because they would be very successful. And I would see people participating in some of them and during their life producing data, producing value, giving feedback, giving inputs to those platforms, bringing their uh, creative contribution when they want, as they want. Because the thing with creativity is that you cannot just like, hey, can you make me laugh? or can you find the next, you know, inspiration or can you make a melody right now? Those things are coming out of the blue. You are just, you know, in your shower or you wake up and suddenly you have a vision, you have an idea and you want to create it. So imagine having all those people being part of those organizations and navigating uh, a life where the question would be, okay, what can I create today and for whom? And you would ask, Nobody's permission, you would just join, submit, get reviewed by the community. So of course when I say no permission by the top authority, but there would be a horizontal form of curation, of filtering, because we don't want to end up in, in total chaos, obviously. Uh, we need some kind of selection or some kind of uh, curation happening on the platforms. Uh, we need some kind of uh, safety also and all those things could be provided by the participants in the platform and so it means that you wake up and you ask yourself okay how can I contribute and how can I get some of the value that is uh, produced by me interacting with this platform in a creative manner and so how far are we from such Utopia, uh, let's, let's not be afraid of the world. Well, the decentralized autonomous communities already exist. Uh, some of them are pretty successful already. Uh, if you take, for example, the EOS community, which is uh, a $4 billion platform that is owned by thousands of uh, stakeholders who are partic participating in its governance. Uh, when you look at uh, Telos, which is innovating uh, every day on the, the governance models, uh, obviously the Ethereum community in the blockchain, that's, that's for the blockchain, but this concept of horizontal decentralization goes way beyond that. It, it, it involves communities and society starting to look at each other as peers. So the, the, the main difference between peer and subject is that when you are the subject, there is this verticality and you have dominance from here. You have disparity. You have disparity in knowledge, you have disparity in, in revenue, you have disparity in, in everything. Postmodernity, as we saw it earlier, is about horizontality. It's about people obviously not perfectly equal but getting 
much closer to that and having the capacity to move like waves in their environment, in the economy. And so now with New Life, we have the capacity to create one of the biggest decentralized autonomous community to show the world how it works, to show how it's possible. And uh, in the next episodes, we will talk about the actual features of the app and how you can use your um, creativity to uh, democratically make culture evolve. And we will discuss about the creative industries and how the decentralized communities can make uh, much better. Uh, and we saw it earlier with uh, the example of a TV channel. How can decentralized communities fit more the purpose of uh, creative communities? And then we'll dig, dig down uh, the, the, the rabbit hole and uh, we'll talk about this concept of collective creative creativity and describe uh, in details the, the new life ecosystem, uh, creative coordination, and uh, we will present you the roadmap. So it's going to be the last video. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon.